Hello, good morning, and happy Tuesday. Um, Zilby, uh, Zilby, wait. Okay, he's, I was afraid he maybe found a spider and did, was doing something to it, but who knows. Toggle bit, hello. Needs more background music? Um, can you not hear that? Is it, is it completely empty? I've been, ever since, um, we lost the, uh, uh, Twitch music thing. Oh yeah, that's not working, is it? Uh, hold on. What have we got here? Okay, so I have desktop audio on channel track one. And that apparently is going nowhere. So let's try track six and one. How about that? Be, I'm not going to raise up an entire piece of furniture for you to go hunting spiders. Yeah, it's uh, drums and vague. Yeah. I'm not putting it aside that maybe we just we're all insane and there is no music and there's never been music. That, that's a possibility. Uh, this is so I'm on the chill hop channel. Let's let's skip this song. Let's. I do have it pretty light. I can raise that up a little bit. How about how about that? Also, good morning, Sacking. Uh, how are you all doing today? Um, Dumoroy, hello. Good morning. Bill, do you want to come in here and join us? Not just sit there in the dark, stare at furniture. He's in the other room, but there's no way the camera would get to him, so I'm not going to... I'm going to wait until he decides whether or not he wants to come in or not. Um, uh, all right. We are, we are working on, um, oh, creating, cre inserting an author. Uh, and so we're working on a query for that to go in. And you're upset. Why? Mo oh, right. Multiple actual items in the scope. So there's apparently... There's apparently multiple of them that it could be. Oh, multiple traits for it. So, candidate number one is defined as an input of the trait standard default default for the type and the author's active model. Candidate number two is defined as in an input of the trait CRM active model trait for the type and C as author author's active model. I bet it's that second one. Uh, how do I want to pull this in? Also, what, what's up with you? Unused import. Oh, not using that. Let's see, um, we have entity. Now I have the prelude. Authors. Oh, that's the struct, okay. And then authors here. 
And then we have all of these. I don't see anything that would be like default though. I vaguely remember in in CRM I want to pull in one of these things and then rename it as entity. So it's gonna be like okay, authors not active model. It might be this entity. And then we're gonna rename that as uh author, authors. Now, I suppose I instead of this default also. Ooh, okay, so ne never mind it. Doesn't like that so far. Let me try, ooh, let me try this again. Okay, new author. We're gonna do uh, entity. So that's the sea worm entity, and then the prelude gives me. I'm not sure what's different to that as that. Now. Oh, so that's the struct. I can do this. Uh, we can grab oh you can't you can't help me at all here uh, if I go into authors here's entity source and these authors uh, okay so I can see ID and name here I want the ID to be default and I want the name to be whatever the name is coming in as. So that would be name is going to be the create author. I want that default default. Yeah, okay, fine. We're gonna go look at the documentation. So that C query that I want, I feel like it's C or M that I want. Okay, so we've got migration set up. I want, we got the entities set up for us. I want to do an insert. End of functor zero. Hello. Uh, what are you reading? Um, CRM documentation. All 
are you seeing something? No, it, that, that should be what you're what you're seeing. Have you ever used Rust before? Will be stop going after wall spiders and knocking them to the floor to become floor spiders. Oh, the active model just looks weird to you. Yeah, that's um, everything around this looks a little bit weird. Okay, so this is kind of what I want here. Yeah, I can use active model to insert a row into the subset of column set. Now, let's also insert one. Okay, so fruit active model, create that. Oh yeah, then there's this default default and that's what I want. Okay, so I want that active model. Okay, can you maybe see Zilby now? Ooh, that's that's gonna be tough. He's just inside the shadow part on the other side of the door. So I, don't, I have no idea if you'll be able to see him. If he walks in though, come on. Um, okay, so let's try this again. So I want let, uh, so a new author equals, and it's going to be authors. Okay, so use entity authors, active model. Uh, we want the... There's the default default. And we're gonna have the name, and that's gonna be the create author name. There we go. Okay. Mismatch types expected. Oh right, right, right. It's not it's not the normal thing. I have to do the set, right? I have to do a set. Okay, we're gonna set for the active value, and this will be the create author that name. I think I can move it in here. I don't think I need it anymore. Oh, we walk the other way. Uh, so then we can save. I probably want something back so that. Right, now I need the DB. Okay, so to get the DB, we need to pull in state. Uh, so I need the DB, which is gonna be a reference to a database connection. Uh, you return a result, which I can handle with that. Oh, but it's probably an await result. Ah. Okay, so I created the author, uh, and then I want to return an author, which is that other type. And you're an active model, so I wonder I wonder if I want to do like a from or something or like an into with that. So can I come here and say, let me pull from, an author active model. Oh, 
Okay, so if I give that active model I want to into that to come here. Ooh, but that gives me like an active value. So I need to convert this into a not active value. Uh, convert active model back to model. Try into model unwrap. So, so I could do a try into. Try into responds with an option, right? Or does it, is it a result or an option? I don't remember anymore. Oh, it's a result, okay. So uh, you're unwrapping there, so I can't see what type of error that might be. Um, so we have type error equals something. Okay, so you become that kind of result, that error. Okay, so we get good. Try from, okay. So I want to we just have the model. Try into model. There we go. See your result with a DB error. Okay. You didn't find that type. Wait, this is the... Oh, as we're going... Oh, man. Okay, so... It's the, it's the fun side effect of all the macros. I go to the definition and it's not this. Uh, okay, that's not what I wanted. Um, okay, so I need to figure out where this DB error comes from. Oh, that's where you come from. Okay, fine. You couldn't find it when I wrote it, but afterwards I can find it. All right, so then I can try into model and then question mark you. And then we can do a self ID is going to be model ID name is going to be model dot name. Oh, and of course you need to be an okay. Why are you upset? Conflicting implementation of trait, try from active model for type author. Oh, interesting. I wonder if it doesn't like this. Um, it probably doesn't like this as the, the type name. Uh, let's try author, DB author. Um, Response author. Conflicting implementation from type response author. Conflicting implementation and creates entity. What? What? 
Yeah, it's only one error here. There's a conflicting implementation of this. Is there is there another response author? Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's in create entity. So if I look at entity. Oh, but it's not going to have anything because of all of the the macros. Yes, there's nothing going to help me there. Nope, didn't want to do that. Stop. Search. Okay, so if I change you for to something else like that. Don't you dare tell me that's already exist. Okay, so no matter what I name it, it's already been implemented. That's interesting. Okay, fine. I will then just do this in in all in there. Let's do this as we can make you author again then. Okay, so I get the created author. Uh, then we want to make it the, I want to turn this into the model. So I can do this out here. I expected, oh, it's an I-32, not an I-64. Okay, so to you. Okay, so you're running. Okay, so that's the query. So we have the query now that should insert an author into the database for us. Uh, and then it should return what we created, which means I can go back to the route. I have the new author there coming in. I want to now call that query. And then we can uh, create author JSON. So I just want this to be an author. Nope, that's... I want this to be, ooh, a status code with an author, which I think it have to do this as a tuple. Status code first, author. Okay, so that's. Um, what did I call this queries? Um, okay, insert author, uh, created, okay, so the create author, so that'd be the new author. And then the DB, which means I need the state, I need to do that for this.
hear that app config. I wouldn't be, okay, I don't need to actually return an error there. I return a status code here. Uh, and this is an internal server error. Question mark you. That gives us an author here. And then we can give uh, the author. Oh, but it's going to be JSON author, right? Okay, you were upset uh, because you... The treat bound function, okay, so extract state, then JSON uh, with the results for those things. Status code author is not satisfied. Uh, okay, so I don't think I did that correct. It's not, it's not status code second, right? We can try it. I think it's usually, isn't it tuple code and then thing and then JSON? Maybe not. I uh, did not like that. Uh, Aether, hello. Uh, good morning, evening. Um, uh, no unit test today, but more uh, SQL programming. SQL programming can be fun. It can also be really frustrating, but it uh, it when when we find like the right query and you get the stuff that you want to get. Especially if it's a complicated one, ah, that's that's a good feeling. And especially if it happens fast. Okay, so I want now Axum stuff. You live for backend development. Relational databases are the best thing in the field. They 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 do feel easy for me to sort of handle and uh, sort of like grok what's happening. Uh, document databases are fun too. I don't know. For some reason, they take a little bit more brain power for me to use. Any progress to the project? Yeah, we've been making decent progress. Uh, we're trying to, to return some JSON and a status code right now. And I'm having little bit of a trouble with that, which is I I think it's mostly me forgetting how to do two things 
at the same time, which is, we did it not very long ago. Okay, here. Uh... Oh, an array of tuples. Wait a second. So these are all, okay, so anything that implements into response can handle that. So we can respond with just a string, a vector of numbers, okay, that, status code. Header map. You know how to do that in Java? Well, I mean, it's it's less of the fact that it's Rust. I think it's more of the fact that it's just the, uh, the framework itself. Additionally, you can return tuples to build more complex responses from individual parts. Okay, so this is what I want. Status code and string. And it sounds like what it would be would be status code headers and then whatever the response data is going to be. In general, you can turn tuples like these. Okay, so status thing. Okay, we could do an impl into response. Maybe maybe that will help. Ah, okay, so now this tells me right away you're not happy with this. Let's go back and change you again. Go on, return it, okay. So now you start with okay with that. So we wanna do a status code created. And you're still okay. And then I want to do a JSON. with the author inside. Uh, did I imp did I forget to implement Oh. Is it just that? That was it the entire time. The fact that I didn't implement serialize and deserialize on it. Okay. That's fun. Uh, yeah, so links are accepted in chat as long as they're from the secret leak list that I've not published because I'm too lazy to do that. Basically, I have a bunch of, um, I deny links except for a bunch that I've whitelisted. That's that's really what it is. And so things from like Stack Overflow are fine. Things from like GitHub are okay. Um, there's uh, crates are fine. Things like that. Then when it gets into like generic websites, that's usually where it gets to be more, more tricky. Um, okay, so that, the problem was uh, serialize and deserialize wasn't implemented. 
uh, it gave me that error message, which is great. Love, love those good, high quality error messages. Uh, let's go to the test. So I, I think this should hit it now and it should run the test. Okay, so we got the test passed. So we did a a create. Okay, we did an insert into authors. Returned one, okay. It shows us what what we did. We got a 201 back. Okay. And so that's what we got right here. So we got the created author back and then I probably want to, um, I, I should document my work. Um, I want to get to the point where I can start creating the lessons as soon as I find something like this. Uh, then, then it would be sort of like a, basically it would be a little blog article uh, for each thing that I that I find. I haven't really fully figured out how I want that to to look or work yet, so I don't. I'm not really there yet. So yes and yes and no, mostly no. I mean, can we count the video archive as documentation? Um, let's see, okay, so I created author. Oh, so then what I probably wanna do is go into the database and find it by this ID and make sure that it exists there. Uh, and uh, the only reason I would be doing that here is uh, because this is an assessment, I want to see that it actually works. Uh, how would I want to do this? I probably want some like utilities or queries inside of here you're in midst of building your own server currently uh where you would containerize different projects then maybe create a centralized learning path or something similar that people learn by your findings maybe inspire others to write stuff yeah that that's like a really important part of education is to be able to sort of like see and explore and and like feel safe for you know going through and and like basically having problems. I'm really big into those. Um, I want to do a query here to get the author. Oh, you know what we can do? We can do a query inside of the other queries and call it from in here, I believe. I think that would work. I think I have access to that. So let's let's find out. So if I go into our author queries, I want to async function get author by ID. So I have the ID, which we know is an I32 now. We'll have the DB, which is a database connection. And we'll return a result with an author. Uh, okay, so let um, queried author, author query. Okay, so this is gonna be not the active model. I think it's just the normal model. Uh, so what is it? Um, I can do authors. 
we have model entity probably model Ooh, find my statement ID um... so discoverability from see where I'm using uh, using rest analyzer really sucks okay so I get it from the entity and I okay then I can do entity find by ID and that's that's the model no entity find by ID pass it in the ID Uh, give me one with the DB. Oh, wait. Oh, and that gives me an option. Okay, then I want this to be an okay. Ooh, ooh. I know, I know what I can do. So let sum that equals this. Otherwise, we don't find it. I want to bail. Uh, we're just going to say I uh, could not find. Uh, actually, is this? That, this is not what I want to do. I probably want this to be a result with an option inside of here. that so I probably don't want to bail at all I'm gonna do this uh, we await that question mark and then question mark you don't like that second question mark Okay, so I have the model. So what I would like to do is question mark, question mark. Uh, you're unhappy. I want to I wanna essentially do that. But okay, fine. You won't let me do that. Um, they lets me have the option model. I need to, oh, I need to map this. I need to map this. So map the option to turn it into an author. And then I could just return that. Okay, so we could just map you. We have the DB author. And I want to return an author. Can I do an into for a model? Ooh. Let's see if I could do it into, uh, into for a model here. So impl from model using authors. Okay, you're happy with that. So then we can do into into like that. You're unhappy? Uh type annotations needed for that. Hold on. I've got you. Oh, 
Oh, hey, Zilby, you're back. All right, mismatch types. Expected a result. Oh, result. Um, yes. Okay. That. All right, there we go. So now I have a get author by ID. Um, oh, Aether, you're redeeming pet the cat. I will absolutely do that. Ruby, hi. It's kind of funny how Zilby constantly like forgets what's around him or what's going on. So that's why I like usually say his name or something before I like pet him. Try to get his attention. Otherwise he like he freaks out when I when I touch him. Even then when I sort of got close to him with my hand, he did the little burr, the little murr sound. As the I wasn't expecting that. And of course, he always faces the opposite direction. He likes to look at the door. I think because he knows that there's no, nobody can come in from the other direction. So he's gonna watch that. But I don't have a long enough cable to uh, put my camera on the other side. He's looking for possible escape. I think he's, I don't think he's looking for possible escape. I think he's looking for Keeping an eye on invaders. But we all know that he's really looking for spiders. Turret cat, that's that's true. Okay, so I have a get author by ID here. Now I want to go back to my tests. Back to my tests. And I want to get the okay, so we have this created author. I want to get the DB, like author in DB. Now get author by ID. Okay, so I grab you. Created author ID. And I need a database connection. So I can get a database connection with Aren't I supposed to put like a URL on this? No. Oh, be no, because it uses an environment variable. And I have a dot in V, so I think that I think that it works. Okay, so I could just use connect pools. Let DB use LDB con. Wait, that's mine. I want that. Um, oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Oh no, this, this will be fine. I do want to use connect like this. Okay, so I'm gonna use connect. Yes, okay, you wanna use connect. Uh, we await you. I get a database connection. I, I sort of forgot that I have special logic in this db model mod model module that figures out like based on the uh, environment variable and all that stuff so it, it just does me does it for me automatically so 
Here I can grab a database connection and then we hand it into you. So we wait, question mark you. That gives me an option with an author. So um, we have that created author response. Okay, so that. How do I want to do this? That gives me an author, created author response. So I have test types. Okay, so create author response. I wonder if I can do, can I do partial equal for different types that implement the same thing? Otherwise, I probably don't want to use this type at all. Make you be an author and you come from that, that type there. Okay. So then we get you do that. And I want to assert equal that, uh, author and DB is going to be the same as a sum, uh, created author. Wait, wait. Yeah, created author. Uh, which you're going to be upset about because you don't implement partial equal. So you need to go to this types. You're still upset. Um, oh, it needs to implement debug too. Okay, now you're now you're happy. Uh, so if you run this again, all the all the tests pass, and I believe that we should be able to see this in the. Uh, in the database now. So we should be able to do PSQL connect in. There's our beautiful author names that have been created here. So we have two of them. If I run this one more time, we have three of them. Okay. All right, so uh, that I believe is the first, the first test here, right? Create an author. Okay, so that is successfully creating an author for us. Let's uh, let's clean up. All right, no errors, no warnings. Uh, if I run, could not format it correctly. Um, interesting, but it's not formatted. What is this? Called again. This is Bookstore API. Okay, so I want to go CD into code, uh, books builds, axiom assessments, Bookstore API. Uh, I want to. Run code format, so cargo uh, 
Okay, everything is happy now. So there was some formatting not happening. All right, everything's passing, everything's saved. All right, uh, we are testing that we can create an author. Test one down. All right, let's buffer close all. And let's head back into our, author, our author's test. Okay, so this is all done. So next up is get one author with their with their books. So that's that's the next thing. I want to get an author with the author's books. Oh, why does it say Clippy Happy? Um, oh, over here. So uh, are you familiar with Clippy in Rust and what, what that is? Uh, basically, I have a shell script. One of the things that's running is the Clippy command on the source code, and it's uh, whether or not it, it passes with a zero exit code or not. Oh, you've never heard of Clippy? Okay, so Clippy is pretty cool. So Clippy comes with, with Rust uh, nowadays. Um, we can do cargo Clippy and it checks the entire source code for, for basically it's a, think of it as an optional linter that it has more, is more strict. It would be the way to put it. Uh, then I have it set up so that way if there's any warnings, any, any suggestions in Clippy, it returns them as errors uh, for this script here. Um, wonder that there's a, there's a website that has what the lints are for Clippy, right? Uh, Mohad, hello. I know, I know. Clippy was something you had in window. Wasn't Clippy on... Windows 95, wasn't that where it started? Uh, Mohad, how are you doing today? Good morning. I do remember it was very old and I remember the, um, it was, it's, uh, it was it was good, but also at the same time drove people absolutely insane. I don't know why they chose Clippy here as the name for this optional linter, but it's supposed to like help you have like higher quality code. So, anyways, here's uh here's what's interesting. Basically, all these things that you can that Clippy is checking for you. Uh, so. Like for example, if you use standard FS create dir, it's actually gonna suggest, hey, you should use standard FS create dir all. I'm doing good. Thank you, Mohad. Uh, let's see what else, what other things are in here. Checks for Checks for usage of disallowed names for variables, such as foo. Um, ironically, we're working on Axum Course 2.0. So uh, I'm creating assessments for this one. So previously in the, the YouTube Axum Course, I sort of didn't really have assessments. It was more like follow along while I do stuff. And like, I talk about stuff. This one's gonna be a here, right? Like write this stuff and it's going to be a full, it's, um, I'm taking lessons from my, my code school, uh, uh experience where it, this is going to be an actual like test almost in a way interactive. Yes. It's going to be something you pull down. There's going to be tests in it and there's missing code. 
So basically, I'm, I'm writing the entire thing up with a solution. And then I'm removing a bunch of stuff and saying, okay, well now I'll write the part in again so all the tests pass. And then you have to like, you don't have to spin up Axum yourself. You just have to like focus on the one thing that the lessons we're all talking about. So to give an example here, the lessons here are gonna be for the CRM for connecting to the database. So it's gonna be all of these things. So creating migrations to set up the database, um, I I don't know if we need seeds. Uh, maybe we do. We need seeds to set up the database. Um, using CRM. Okay, so creating insert in a row, uh, reading a row, uh, read many rows, update, delete, and many to many join. And that's what this this one assessment is going to cover all of that. So it's actually like a micro project. Yeah, we're doing it all from scratch. So like if we look up here, uh, we've got, you know, the hello world assessment in here. We're doing a mirror API, um, JSON responses, things like that. And I'm taking a bunch of feedback that I got from the YouTube Axum course to throw it in here. So for example, one of the big things was because I set up the database with the data already in there, in Docker, there were some, some people had some issues reading that. So we're just gonna go ahead and set up migrations and seeds inside of CRM. And that way you don't have to have a database in Docker, you can use a database wherever. It could be in Docker, or it could just be on your own, own system, or it could be a cloud database. It doesn't really matter at that point. All it needs to be is something that implements, well, I guess like it doesn't even have to be Postgres. If you don't like the one that I chose, you could just change it and make it yourself. Thank you, Mohad. Yeah, I really want Rust to, Rust to spread as, as well. And uh, I have some teaching experience, and so I uh, this is this is my way of contributing. Plus, I think it's fun, and I, I think that if I if I continue improving uh, with this DAO, because my my previous educational experience was all in person, so doing the online teaching is fairly new to me still, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do it right. And I've not really like enjoyed liked most other online courses that I've taken. So I'm uh, I'm still experimenting a lot with this. Um, all right. Does that also, Aether, answer your question about Clippy? Uh, it's, I think it's pretty nice. I've set up Helix here to yell at me if Clippy fails for any reason. So we we just deal with that. Um, all right, so have that. All right, so get one author with their books. Okay, so this is perhaps now, if I want to do this one next. I need to do... Have I tried Diesel RS? Yes, so for... Which, which application was it? I did Diesel for an app a long time ago. And it was fine, but when I was making the first version of the Axum course, I was going through and setting up diesel. So I basically went through and created the 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 the, the back end the API from scratch live on stream uh without like creating any of the lessons for it. And Diesel was giving us some trouble, and the way I was going to have to explain it was really convoluted, and CRM just worked. Uh, so therefore, that's why I ended up going with that. Uh, that being said, the plan uh, is to... I'm going to start with just a single, like, single walkthrough. Like, all you have access to education-wise on my channel is going to be CRM. Then, once I have the course up, I can start creating little sub-modules where it's like, okay, well, you don't want CRM, rip that out, and instead 
do diesel instead or do you know sql x or do something else and then it can it can be better it's gotten a lot better okay that's good i hope so like we need more we need we need plenty of options when it comes to database connections that's one of the database is one of the rough parts about learning backend if you've never done backend or database stuff before it it can be rough Okay, so to get one author with the books, so I need an author, which we could create an author here, but it would probably be better for me to, it would probably be better for me to now have a seed where I create an author that I then know exists in the seeds with some books and we go from there. So that's, that's the next thing is gonna be the seeds. Uh, so we need, I'm curious, can I, can I just figure this out without documentation? So it's something I like constantly try to do is like, okay, is it intuitive enough that I can just figure it out and muddle through it? Or do you have to have documentation if you've never done it before? Uh, we want to use the C or M CLI. Probably generate. Uh oh, um, generate option. Oh, entity. Oh, no, no, no. I can't imagine it's in migration. No, okay, so the CLI doesn't have anything to do with C. Okay, fine. We need to go look it up. Huh, seeding data is under migration. Wait a second. No, you didn't. Oh, no. So. They mixed seeds and migrations together into the same thing. I'm not, I'm not super happy about that. Oh, so what are seeds? So, um, I guess like, first of all, are you familiar with migrations and what those are when it comes to database? Yes. Okay. So they're, they're sort of like, uh, two seeds in the same pod. Um, the idea is that migrations are affecting the shape of the database and then seeds are filling the database with data. Uh, and so with almost every single other framework for manipulating a database, you get migrations and seeds as separate entities. So what I can say is, okay, update the shape of the database, but there's nothing in there. And now I want to like now just seed and add a bunch of like stuff to the database. For example, testing stuff into the database. The reason why you don't ever want them to be in the same thing is on production. I don't want to seed the database for production. I want only to seed dev database. I want to see the tested database with production. I just want it to be empty and it's going to be filled by, by well, me. But yeah, stacking your, that's correct. The quick short answer is adding data to the database. So, ah, oh man, okay. So to run the seeds, we're gonna have to down, 
everything here. So we're gonna have to do, so you're gonna migrate. We have to down them all. Oh, when I do down, it just does one at a time. Okay, so everything's everything's re-migrated. If we connect to PSQL again. Um, D, DT. Yeah, I have I have no more no more tables. So we we lost those. So it's like an auto generated data for the database for testing. It's um I mean, I guess it's more generic than that. It's it's basically just a script that you could run to insert data at the same time, like through through automate in an automated way to the database. I've only ever heard of them really being used for testing purposes and for like local development purposes. You can absolutely use it for for seeding in production, but I don't know anybody who does that. Usually you create everything and then you hand it to like a business analyst or somebody else and they use the GUI or like whatever API you provide to add data to the database because you they want to like do it one at a time or whatever they want. Okay, so I've rolled back everything. And so the suggestion here is in in up we insert <laughs> that that's it we just we just insert okay um oh but i can get a connection here interesting so i want to go to migration What was first? First First was books, right? No, authors was Authors was first. Okay, so we're going to start with an author. So here's Okay, so here's where we create these. Do I have to create another Oh, interesting. Okay, so then I could use exec statement and just do that. That's not bad either. Okay, so I run this manager and so then I want to seed this. Uh, how does the database connection work at all then? Uh, sorry, you missed last 20 minutes. How do you specify connection with accent? Oh, uh, yeah, so I, I cheated. Um, I have... right here uh in in a folder of course i don't have um uh, okay so in my yeah i have them as environment variables so in my code here we have uh do so here's source uh, inside of source, I have DB, and inside of DB, I have the mod file. And so here I have this connect. Uh, I get the database URL, which is an environment variable. And if we take a look at this in my .env example, you can see database URL is going to be this essentially. So it's a it's a Postgres URI. Uh, and then I just do database connect, hand it that URL, and I, I've got it. It's it's good to go. So as long as I have that environment variable, we're we're good. We're good to go. And I like to use um, this connect function in here 
uh, because then I can call it from tests, I can call it from wherever I want, and that just gives me a connection here. And the database connection itself is a is actually a pool. So in it's uh, it's not just a simple struct. I believe it's a smart pointer, so it can be cloned, but you're still getting the same database connection, which is which is nice. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, I've um, I do remember using environment variables and teaching environment variables to to new developers is also a uh, it takes a little bit of time to to wrap your mind around you. So you have these like just data that's available for you, and it's not in your source code, uh, and that's more secure than like than doing something else. And then there there's so many good reasons for using environment variables. Um, okay, so I just, I can't, I don't want to do it. Okay, so if I, if I migrate these and I create a new migration and I have those be the seeds, then at least they're different. As a rule of thumb, you should never declare authentication anywhere in the code. Yes, agreed with that. Credential should never go into GitHub or wherever your code repository is. That's a uh, And and for any of you who are using like a private GitHub, just don't do it. Don't do, don't do it. Don't, don't rely upon GitHub keeping your code secret because it's probably not going to do that. Uh, there's been just this year, off the top of my head, I think there's been two incidents where where people got like there's some vulnerability in GitHub. Or, or something happened where people just got access to private code or could potentially get access to the private code in your repos, which is not not great as you would imagine. The other thing is that uh, GitHub Copilot, while they claim it was never trained on private data, uh, there are reports that people found their keys in generated code, which leads a lot of people to believe that GitHub may accidentally have trained private data on that. And if your keys were in there, now it may or may not just be handing that to random people. Your first ever project had your, your private Discord API token within the code. Luckily, no one got it and you renewed it. But later you learn, never declare them again within the code. You, um, Maybe after adding node modules to gitignore. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the first rules. Yeah, you, you learn that one pretty quickly, uh, especially if it's a really big one and you add in you add in the thing and you do a git push and it's like, oh, wow, this is taking a long time. This sucks. Uh, that being said, there is times to add in node modules to git to GitHub sometimes, but you have to know when to break the rules and why you're breaking it. Um, Aether, did you get did you get one of the fun emails from like a security company? That that happens a lot, especially like to students. They would come up and say like, "Hey, I got I got an email saying that I uploaded a token." And what, what am I being hacked? And it's like, no, no, delete your token now. <laughs> okay. Friend noticed it that that's nice. Yeah. Um, one of my mentors was creating a course and wanted to show off that. So in the dot ENV, created a realistic looking token 
and made it so realistic looking that started getting emails every day saying, hey, you have a you have a token in your code. You have a token in your code. You might want to do something about that. Yep, you have a token now. And he's like, I know it's an example. It's not real. You mean renew your token, then delete. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, yeah, Node.js, Node.js has the, uh, the, the node modules. Imagine it being the same as putting the target directory up in, in cart, in, um, Rust. It would like that, that, that's a lot of craft that you just don't need. Okay. So thinking about this, I don't want to put it in here. I want to create a new migration for this. Let's re-migrate. I... I don't, I didn't need to actually undo all the migrations. Uh, so let's do. Now, will this do all of them? So apply pending migrations. To me, this should do all of them. It did do all of them. Okay, perfect. So. There you go. Okay, so now I have authors, book authors, and books. Great. Oh, the repo's been deleted already. How to bury the project since the Discord bot you were coding didn't bring anything. Oh, it didn't bring anything new, thus the motivation innovation was lost. Yeah, I I'm I've been there with the the motivation thing. It's uh it can be it can be rough. And uh, people like people on Discord keep on adding in new and cool bots. So I've never like Every time I think of an idea to do something, I don't, somebody else has already done it. And the only time to like recreate my own thing would be to either keep the data myself so I don't have to give it to somebody else or to maybe do it better or differently. Okay, so I have you, so I wanna create a new migration for seeding. We'll do authors. Do I want to do seed? I probably want to seed authors. Yeah, so we'll, we'll probably do three seeds. So this is going to be a migrate. Okay, generate a new empty migration. So we want to do a generate. And then it's the name of it. So this is going to be seed authors. And if I remember correctly, in the migration, it adds in. Yeah, OK, so here's seed authors, seed authors, and it adds that in there. For Okay, so then none of you matter. Why are you upset? Oh, because I'm not actually doing anything. All right, so if we're creating something in here, I want to create an author. Uh, author to create. If I remember correctly, there's just like a name and that's it. I think I think that's how I have it set up. Create authors. We have, yeah, we have 
ID and name. So all I need is the name. I want to, I probably want to create them as specific. So I don't, I want to like, I don't want this to be random. I want to like actually create ones that we, that we know who these are. Okay, so it just if it's just the name, I guess we have to have a struct. Uh, let's create three authors. We'll have maybe an author that doesn't have any books, an author that has one book, and an author that has two books. That way we can get like the one that has many, the one that has one, and the one that has nothing. That That makes sense to me, so. I don't know if I want to do that here or here. We can get the DB, so that DB. Okay, get connection. Huh, that looks slightly different. It's a schema manager connection. But apparently I can use it for that. That that works. Okay, then I want to create I want to create one that has one. I probably want to do this as like a I don't, I don't need this. I think I just want a function. The next sync function inserts author. We'll take in a name. Now this is going to be that schema manager connection, isn't it? Ooh, I don't have error in here. And I don't really care about this, do I? It's just like, oh, whatever. Doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, all right, so we'll return you. So we'll first create... Our first one to create the active model, just like what we have here. And then I could do... Oh, I could do the insert instead of save. That works too. Okay, so I want um, Oh, wait, can I not find it?
Okay, so for you, dependencies. I want to do entity. So go back, find entity, and then bring that up. Uh, Joey, hello. I hope I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Um, how are you doing today? Uh, yeah, I I do like the the Zellage um setup for this. Uh, I can't remember like the one thing, one of the things that I like a lot is the floating windows, which I can't remember if you could do with um. Tmux or not. It's been too long. But those are those are really nice. I nailed the pronunciation. Perfect. How are you doing today? So have you now we can grab the author, which I need to no stop. Ah. You can, they behave a bit differently. Okay, I don't think I ever tried it with Tmux. So I never really got too much into Tmux because I, when I first started, I ended up just using screen for most of my career. And then, then I used Tmux for like a year. And then I came, then I like didn't use anything at all for a long time and then then back to, um, then to Zellage. Cutting up some patches for a Tmux theme you're developing. Oh, nice. Custom themes are always nice. Ooh, okay. So here we go. So here's our entity authors. I want the active model. Now you're, okay. So you're suggesting I just do this active model. Oh, and then I can just do insert on of it. So active model. Default, default but we're going to do um, name is going to be name to owned. We're going to insert pass in the DB. Oh, wait and question mark. Oh, unused. That's why. That's why you're yellow. Why are you? Okay. I don't know why it wasn't fixing those. Uh, okay. Why? Oh yeah. Okay. So semicolon. That's probably why it wasn't working. I want to import into the authors. Yes. Okay. Um, your name. Right. It needs to be a set. Keep on forgetting to do set. Uh, what? No, stop. Name to owns. Uh, insert. So, active model, do this entire thing, and then insert. You brought in entity star and query star.
Oh, but that's C CRM migration, CRM, SD Stark, Raystar. Uh, what trait am I missing? No method found, named insert, found for struct, entity authors, active model, and the current scope, items from Okay, so active model. So I need use entity authors, maybe star. Okay, no, so the trait's not in here. There's no other module in here. Okay, how about we have prelude. But that's not going to do it either. Okay, so it's not you. Uh, CRM migration, CRM entity and query. So maybe it's maybe it's these. Final. Oh, that was it. Okay, so it's part of entity. Okay, so it's part of the CRM migrations crate, CRM entity, and somewhere in here is a trait that gives me the ability to insert. That's that's what it is. Okay, so that gives me and that inserts an author for me. So if I have a list of names that I want, we can go ahead and author that. Uh, so let's see. Names. <laughs> um, Rust, uh, you have yet to learn a language. Um, are you interested in learning Rust? It's, um, I, I think it's a fun language. Um, what name should we use for these? I can use like testing names. I don't know if those would be like super, I don't want to use real authors in this. I don't have permissions to use anybody's real name. So I can't, I can't do something like Stephen King or something like that. I want to use, um, I could just do like no, no books. Unpublished. Unpublished. Um, there is one book two books it's not really it's not like super great names but at least like it's it's descriptive with all the hype surrounding it, for sure. I recently got into programming, so HTML, CSS, and UofM. Have it in your point of contact. Okay, so you've been doing a lot of... Um, it looks. It sounds like you got some uh, front-end stuff. You're doing some Linuxy, like, interfacing at least with Vim. Uh, multiple books? Ooh, yeah, multiple books might be good. So instead of two books... Okay, um, yeah, so I, I'm i a big fan of having at least one compiled, strongly typed language under your belt. And if you have like JavaScript, uh, I would not count TypeScript, um, although I would still recommend TypeScript. I think there's just uh, the TypeScript is too similar to JavaScript to I think really like really solve the uh, the the problems that learning solve I guess it's not really problems 
give you the benefits that learning like a completely different programming paradigm really gives you. Um, okay, so we have that. Now I want to loop through names. We're gonna do names. Now, can I do an async in like a for each? I don't think I can, right? I don't think I've, have I tried that before? I don't remember if I have. So if I do an iter, we do for each, uh, let's do an async blah, uh, async function where we have the name. And then I want to handle each of these. So we'll do a um, insert author. Oh, we need to, yeah, okay, let's, I, I, I want to, I'm just going to do a Ford name. Because I'm already returning a result with a database error, but this is, ooh, this is probably a different type of thing, isn't it? I might still have to do an unwrap. Ooh, could I change? Oh no, it's an impulse for a trait, so I can't change the type of error that it's returning. Um, you recently graduated from a CS-like degree, two-year degree in your country for initiation in tech. So you haven't programmed much. You do have enthusiast level knowledge on Linux chatting. Um, nice, okay, that's good. Uh, the stir are type annotations from the LSP. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so this here. So it's type annotations. This is one of the really nice things that I get from the code editor that I'm using that I don't get in Vim. So NeoVim and Vim, I can get something like this, but it would have to go at the end way over here. And um, I'm using something called Helix, and that gives me right, right in here. Helix is very similar to NeoVim. It's a CLI editor, but it's, um, it's I guess, like just trying to be a little bit more modern. It's um, if you've used Vim for a long time, the longer you've used Vim, the harder it might be to use it. It is definitely more pre-configured. Absolutely. I get all of this stuff with like less than two pages worth of configuration. Okay, so we're gonna have the name here and then the DB, so DB which is just the reference anyways. So we're fine. And then we'll await and then I'll unwrap you. And unwrap is fine because it's gonna, if it crashes, I don't want it to continue seeding the database anyways. So that should be fine. And then I want you to be in the, okay. Okay, so you're happy. Now, if we go down, uh, okay, so if I do a down for this, I wanna undo these things. So um, in that case, how do I wanna do this? I wanna remove the authors. I want to find the authors by name and remove them. I don't trust this. Maybe I just don't do it down. It, there's no, there's nothing that happens in down. So and I don't want like, I don't want down to be a um, just delete everything in the database because this is part of migrations. What if I accidentally run this on production somewhere? That doesn't seem like a good idea. 
the LSP errors warnings in the number column are cool. Yeah, so having those there, and then also I get, uh, let's see if these, I get them up here too. And then I can search across the entire uh, project as well with an open window. Does Helix have a plugin system or just a lot of built-in options? Right now, just a lot of built-in options. They're working on a plugin system. And when they have it, it's going to be great. But it's still pretty early in development, so it's it's work in progress. Uh, Mohad, after immersing yourself into Vim key bindings, you can't feel uncomfortable using Helix. It's it's taken me a while, and you you'll still see me every once in a while just like barf all over the, like the commands and start doing weird things. That's my that's that's my my keyboard commands just getting mixed up and I'm doing the wrong wrong ones then I'm like just it's getting bad uh so I, I just work on it it's to me it's like picking up another game that you're playing with a different control scheme than everything else and maybe you're like even switching back and forth but like after playing for a long time with one game you're going to another one and you have like a really complex controller it just you know eventually we figure it out Yeah, I started using this at my day job, too, and I like it a lot. It just works, which uh, to me is pretty good. I haven't had any major crashing uh, or other major issues with it, especially recently. The muscle memory kicks in on the wrong editor. It happened to you in Nano on a server when using Neo. Oh, yeah, that happens all the time um, where I'm just like constantly doing like I, 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 I. How, that being said, I do that in like text form field inputs too, where I like in this really sucks when I'm in like a web browser and it opens up like a modal or something for me to fill out a form. And so like I type in the thing and then I hit escape and then it closes the entire window. I'm like, no, I just wanted to go back into movement mode and I want even in an editor that can do that. Uh, Steven, hello. How are you doing today? You're uh, you're getting so old. What's what's making you feel old today? So we don't need you. So theoretically, if I run this migration, Well, that's, I mean, that's not necessarily a problem. I think, um, I, I remember, how am I, how am I, I remember when the millennial generation was brand new and getting to like around, around the 20, 24 or something. There were some articles like coming out like, oh, millennials are still living with their parents, but it's like, okay. But like the economy sucks and like that's that's how you have to do it right now. And then ever since then, I've not heard anything negative about it. Like I've not heard anybody shaming anybody else for like living with with their parents or anything, anything like that. I think it's become normalized. I think it's fine. Okay, so I applied that pat. I applied that, so I should be able to come here. And if we do table authors, there we go. Okay, so here's our here's our three seated uh, authors. So now, next up, I want books. And so for books, we're gonna have a name, a price, and in stock. Uh, cat camp for the win? Absolutely. I would pet him, but he's sleeping right now, so I don't. I don't want to wake him up. Uh, his name is Zilby. If you haven't heard, I I reference him all the time, and 
every once in a while he likes to go off into like the other room and just hunt spiders and uh i'll have to like pull him off of them because i don't i don't want him to get bitten or anything um okay so what, what did i do oh right now we're gonna create now we're gonna create another migration so let's generate seed books seed books gonna get rid of you and place you with an okay and get rid of you replace you with an okay get rid of you okay I want an insert books function I'm just gonna do this one at a time no it's not I know it's not like maybe the proper way of doing something, but I don't really care. Um, DB, I already forget the name, what this is. Huh, database backend. So I can figure out what type of database it is. What do you give me? Give me that. Right, schema manager connection. So you'll use that error. I don't care about you. So there you go. Uh, you may be able to set up different databases for different parts of the app. Yeah, that's also true. But the mat the migration, when it runs, at this point of time, it needs to know what the connection is before it starts. So I think it's more of, I might need to use something like that to programmatically know which database or type of database i'm connecting to because i don't know <laughs> it's just going to run this blindly and i suppose this is where i could say something like hey if we're in production abort don't do anything at all which i mean i could get an environment variable to tell if I'm in production and just ignore this. It, I don't I still don't like the fact that I'm having to do in a seed inside of a migration. All right, um, active model time. So uh, we're gonna do an, uh, what is it? It's um, entity is gonna be books active model Got it set everything there all right so not gonna set the id i want the name uh so we need the name the price and in stock Name, price, and in stock. So let's do, I guess we'll create a book. That's gonna have a name. I wanna say that this is gonna be a U32, uh, but I don't remember. I think we used an unsigned, but it's just unsigned in the database. I, don't, I think that would be U32, uh, but it could be U64 too. Okay, so we have you. So we'll take in our DB and then we'll take in a book. 
Hey, Zoli. You doing okay? Okay, so we'll take in a book like this, and then we can do a... So name is gonna be book.name. Price, book.price. And stock is gonna be book.instock. Uh, right, I keep on forgetting that I have to do sets for these. What are you upset? The type constrained, the type constructed contains a U32 due to the type of argument passed. Expected an I32 found a U32. Oh. I could swear that we set the price to be an unsigned. Is that true? So migration create books. Yeah, price. Unsigned. Fine. Okay, so we're not doing anything with this. Uh, unnecessary operation. Got it. Um, now I want to do an insert. End of the DB. We'll await and unwrap. You're getting goosebumps by seeing SQL database, SQL data types in code. Is that good goosebumps or bad goosebumps? Because I can see it. I can see it either way. Okay, so if I have that book, now I want to create one book owns one book and multiple books own multiple books. Oh, it's like a weird excitement. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of fun to sort of see that. And most, most ORMs have some kind of SQL in whatever language they're written in. So if you're using something like connects in JavaScript, then you're going to get that in JavaScript and it's, it's nice. If you're using, you know, CRM, you get the same thing in Rust. Uh, and then I think there's like, I think there's, a, there's one for every single language. So whatever, whatever you want, you can go out and find one. I need to create probably a minimum of three books uh should we be like really 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 boring with this Okay, so a book, uh, this will be um, book one. Boring, right? Uh, price. Um, I guess like what we could do is instead of like book one or book two, we'll do something like free book. So price will be zero.
in stock uh, will be true. Um, then will be expensive book. I think we were planning on doing these in pennies, so I need to, I need to figure out what like, what I want to do for that. It's gonna be something like, that's a dollar, right? So a dollar times maybe like a hundred dollars. Um. What do you miss? You went to close windows because of the heat where you live in. I don't know. Uh, how 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 long ago did you did you did you leave? Um, we're creating. We're currently creating a book. Uh, seeds. So inserting seeds as books. Inserting books as seeds in a seed. Something like that. Uh, let's see. We have that in stock true, and then. Finally, last one uh, is going to be unavailable book. Unavailable book. Uh, so you could be a normal price. You're maybe like you're four dollars. You're fourteen dollars or so. Uh, and the year false. There I have, I have like a combination of several different ideas of what it could be. Oh, only five minutes? Oh yeah, you haven't missed much. I've been mostly, mostly just doing, creating these books. I created a book, uh, struct and I created the book, the insert book function here. Okay, so then create these. We're going to loop through these again. Uh, and then we're going to do the insert book. We're going to pass the DB and the book. We'll wait and unwrap. Okay. Um, and then for down, we're not doing anything. Uh, do the Vim like keybinds very much in Helix uh, or emotions? So motioning is exactly the same. So K, J, H, and L. So for moving up, down, left, and right. So that that's all that's all normal. Uh, see, is there is there a really long line um, where it starts to get a little bit odd? Is when we do something like if I want to select. If I want to select an entire line, that's X. That selects an entire line. Um, so at that point, we're already in weird land for when it comes to like Helix versus versus Vim. And this is where you probably see the most of my keystroke shenanigans that don't work out very well. Um, a lot of things automatically drop you into visual mode too. So for example, if I'm going like B for back per word, that's normal, but you notice that it's selecting and the entire word as I going over it too. So it's, it's, I'm in normal mode, but it's getting like a visual selection for it too. So it's, uh, if I wanted to change, that just changes that entire thing. So yes, they're mostly the same, but subtle behavioral differences happen. Uh, and I think for the most part, you just have to play around with it and get used to it. Uh, to delete, D is the key. So instead of X, it's delete. I know it is. It is. It does feel a little bit weird, but but cool, I suppose. All right, let's do another. We'll run them. We'll run that migration. Okay, so that's happy. Let's do table books now. Okay, so we have our free book, expensive book, unavailable books. Oh, interesting, the price is integer here. I told it to be unsigned. Postgres has an unsigned, Postgres knows what unsigned is, right? Or is Postgres only integer? 
I don't know if I've ever, ever looked that up. Okay, so we have that. And now, lastly, I want to... I want to now create... I want to create the seeds for... Um, associating books and authors. You follow like on and off, currently just installing Kubernetes at work and there can be some downtime. I, uh, yeah, I get that. I, I, um, oftentimes when I'm at work and I have like the, the little downtime moments, I grab a book and I have, I have some like, I have some various things that I'm reading through. Uh, some of them are technical, sometimes not. Depends upon my, my feeling. Postgres apparently does not have an unsigned int, but does have a big int. That explains it then. So I told it to be unsigned. So this is the power of, of having something like an ORM. It's meant to be connecting to multiple databases. Uh, if I was connected to something that could do an unsigned, it would give me that. Otherwise it gives me whatever the appropriate default would be, which in this case is just a normal integer. All right. Uh, next up, seed book authors. Now this is going to be interesting. Book authors. Um, nope, wrong one. Book authors. You. Author. Oh. Wrong, wrong key. Okay, so what I can do here is I could, you know, I, I just been doing like X multiple times. I have relative numbers on. I should probably just do, um, what, 19X? and select down to here. And then I could just do uh, delete. And then I could just do that. That's probably, that's technically better. You want seven X? Yeah. Oh wait, no, I didn't want seven X. Really too much. You get like one or two minutes, can't reach for a book when you can't even manage to finish chat. Yeah, that, that's the thing is like, if if you have really long running things, then you can do something like that. If it's like super short, then sometimes it might just be, okay, I'm just gonna idly like search through music and like add, add songs to like a playlist or something like that. Or respond to emails, that kind of thing. Respond to, to messages. I do management. I'm, I'm a manager at work, so I have, I often have man messages that I can look through. Okay, so we have this, you're okay. I don't need any of you. Let's do, I want all the way to the end. So seven, get rid of you, you're happy. Okay, so we're all good here. Okay, so book authors. This is gonna be this is gonna be interesting because it's a different it's a different seed. How do I wanna do this? I could assume the ID of what I'm getting, but that can be a problem. I can I can search for, so I need to get the ID of an author and I need to get the ID of a, of a book. And I need to combine them together. If these are all sort of like very basic, then I can assume what the IDs are and we're fine with that. If I've run these seeds after the database has already been set up, 
which should be how it runs, right? Like these are gonna run after everything else set up. So I, I should, I think I should be able to, to predict what the IDs are gonna be. We can do that. Sure, why not? So a uh i need to get i can do a tuple no let's let's do a struct for this so i have a author id is going to be a i32 I don't think I have anything else going on here too. Okay, so our first author doesn't have any books. They don't get anything in here. Our second author has one book. So maybe that could be the first thing, right? So we'll have a book author with an author ID. And if we were to inspect what this looks like, our let's reset this. I will do table authors. So unpublished doesn't get anything one book so id2 is we'll just give them the free book and then the other one is actually making money so one uh two with one so two book id is one now three gets a uh, book ID two and three also gets book ID three. So that's that one. Then I want the insert. Ooh, I need the database. Toby, you hear something? It's okay. All right, um, let's see, insert many, insert book author. So we have to create the active model for this. So that's gonna be our entity, book authors, active model. Our default. Uh, so we'll, actually, I don't need the default. We're gonna set everything on here. Uh, we're gonna have the author ID is gonna be the book author ID, um, and then the book ID. Okay, so I do that. Then I'm going to insert, pass the DB, we're going to await, and question mark you. What are you upset about? Oh, oh, I did it again. 
Um, yeah, so if you're if you're looking at the Helix, uh, you probably saw me do this a couple times. This is probably my favorite thing about Helix is without any configuration whatsoever, whatsoever, I get multiple cursors. So I select everything that I want, and then I do S for select in here, and I want to look for book author. Uh, hit return, and so now I have multiple cursors here. So I want to do a set. Grab that. Um, this is going to be a book author. Come back and do that. Yeah, I, I've i seen some people get multiple cursors in NeoVim, but it, it looks like a lot of work to get it to be exactly what what I would want. And I just got tired and didn't do it. I want a book author. Okay, so you're happy. That was a fast runaway. You mostly use um, Visual Block and Regex Search Replace. Yeah, I um, I don't know why Regex Search and Replace ends up taking me longer to sort of like mentally create the Regex to do and multiple cursors, I guess like feels more intuitive to my brain. So I generally like it a lot more. Okay, so right you, we want to run you. And let's now do table book authors okay so now we have yeah that we have uh we have the as part of the migrations we set up the um relationship so i should be able to now find so let's do select all right let's do select um what do i want to do i want to do select star from authors join oh no we're going to start from here so start from book authors so from book authors join authors on authors dot uh, id is equal to book authors dot author id so join books Okay, so those two joins are in. Uh, let's go there. Can I go to the beginning? No, I can't. Okay, so let's select um, author dot authors dot name as author name. Uh, and then I want, um, books dot name as book name. And then I can't remember. Can I do the rest of it with like books dot star? I can't remember if that works. Let's try it. No, almost, almost, uh, so let's, I won't use star. Plus I don't want the IDs in there too. Then I want books, um, 
dot. So we have name, price, books dot in stock. Okay, so that now we can see, okay, so we have author name, one book, has free book. Multiple books have these two. Uh, ooh, but I don't have, when I try to do this, I don't get the unpublished author. Is that a left join? If I do a left join, does that work? Or do I have to do, is there a more inclusive join or exclusive join? I don't remember. I don't remember anymore. Um, so. Oh, but I'm starting with book authors. That's the reason why. Okay, hold on. I need to start on authors. So let's select. Um, okay, so I want to select, I'm gonna okay, select authors.name as author name. Books.name as book name. Uh, these are unique, so I can just do price, stock. Okay, from authors. Then we're gonna join in um, book authors. Okay, join books. Okay, so join that. It still doesn't give me that one. It's uh, excluding it because it doesn't match the join. Uh, I don't. I don't remember how do I how do I get. In SQL, how do I get all the things even if it doesn't match in the join? Is that even? That's possible. Everything is possible in SQL. I don't think this would be a, would this be a left join? I don't think it would be a left join. I don't think it would be a right join either. I don't think, I don't think it would be a, would it be a full join? Maybe a full join? Okay, I, I completely forgot. Yeah, but it's, uh, so I want, The full join didn't work. The left join didn't work. Uh, I want. I can't imagine right join is going to work. Yeah. Okay. So the joins are the joins are removing that. Uh, also, hello, Danaka. Good morning. How are you doing today? So I want SQL. Uh, I want to select. Select all rows even when not um, matched and joined. Oh, it might be the outer join or inner join or something like that. Ooh, I forgot about that. I then have to do another select or another where. Hmm. 
Um, okay, so we have, we know we have table authors. So we know we have this unpublished here. So if I start from authors, outer has to have said be explicit. Oh, maybe, maybe you're right. Okay, so let's try, let's try that. Let's do, uh, let's see, I'm doing write, so I'm doing join book authors. Uh, if I'm doing this right here, that means it's a write join, right? Because book authors and then authors on the right. That's the right part of it. So let's do right outer. No, neither of those worked. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do I have to do it on both of them? Hold on, let's do full. Oh, do I have to do it on both these? So others join. So full outer join on this. There we go. That's that's what it was. I need I need it to be in both of them. So both joins need to have the outer on it to be able to get me this unpublished. So now I can see, okay, here's the one, one book has free book. It's price is zero. It's in stock true. Uh, multiple books has the expensive book and the unavailable book. Uh, the expensive books in stock for some reason. And the cheap book is not in stock and unpublished has nothing. So there we go. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot about the second join limiting the uh, the search results. So I need I need the outer join on both. Do I need? Um, I don't think I need full then. I probably can just do. Uh, so let's see. I'm on. Uh, I could. This one needs to be. Right outer join. Actually, can this just be? outer join and then this one be right outer join no i need something so i have outer join on that i don't actually care do i uh because like book authors and books like none of them really matter so full is probably Oh no, they both need to be. Okay, so right outer join did not work. So that's not the one I expect it to be. Left outer join. Oh, so the left, the left is authors because that's where I'm starting over here. I was thinking that left was like based upon the authors over on that direction. Some use outer, some don't. Oh, you know what? Do I do I need? Oh, I wonder if I don't need outer at all. Uh, okay, so if I do left join on this one and full join on this one, I wonder if that would work. That works. Okay, so I don't need an outer join at all. What I need is a left join on from authors to book authors and then a full join on whatever you know the the leftovers of that and then joining in books and that gives me everything that i want uh but we can now see that i have like the the seeds have now worked we're we're in here so we're, we're good to go.
Oh, that's weird. Where did that OD come from? Ooh. I did control E at the end uh, to go to the end and it didn't go there right away. It took two key presses to do that. That's interesting. Um, what am I using as a DB client in Rust? I'm using CORM. And so we just wrote uh, some seeds, which unfortunately, and um, I'm still I'm still upset at this. I think that it's reasonable upsetness. I, I don't think this is unreasonable for me to be upset about this. Uh, you have to put the seeds into migrations, which is, I guess, like I probably don't need to do something like this here. Maybe I can do this in like a lesson, but. If I want to find out what the so we have that get connection, but I don't think that's what it is. We have the database backend. I probably want to do something like get an environment. So use use .env to get an environment and then make like then then do the then do the migration then do then basically run the seed part or not based upon whether or not we're in production uh too many dependencies for your for two little queries so you just go with rust Rescue light plus, yeah. If I mean, if it's like super, 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 super basic, then yeah, you could just do it on your own. For most beginners, if if you haven't used databases before, I highly recommend, even if it's like a really, really small use case, just use the ORM. Just get used to like working with databases, and then once you sort of get better at it, then then jump into you know more more lightweight solutions. I think there's too many, there's too many options, like there's too many possibilities for little problems, little, little errors to pop up. Like you and I, Danaka, know how, how dangerous a uh, SQL injection attack are is. So we, but we also know how to like prevent them. Uh, if you don't know about that, you won't, you won't try. Simply learn some SQL. Yeah, that's, that's, that's too, but like, if you're also learning everything else, I don't think that learning SQL is the first thing. I think you learn that after you just get everything else going. Especially if you're learning on the job and you're building something for production for somebody else, don't just just do just use the ORM. Your client will thank you when you don't get hacked. Actually, they won't. Nobody thanks you for not getting hacked. Okay. Did I... I... I did commit. Okay, so I got that in there. Uh, just waiting on the SQL X update. Are these okay? So I, I remember that they're they have an update coming. I can't remember what it's for, but it's uh, it's supposed to be a pretty big one, right? That's gonna make things way like really good. Use SQL X under the hood, and you don't like that they force you to pick some TLS library, even if you use SQLite where it's pointless. But that's fix. Oh, right, right. That's what is the TLS thing. Ooh, okay, this is where we're at next, is get one author with their books. Okay, so uh, it's 8.36, we have less than 10 minutes left. Oh, Dilby, you disappeared and you came back. Hi. Hi, you wanna, you wanna come up?
No. Okay, so I want to get one author with with their book. So this is where we can test the seeds and that the seeds are working by um it's like a combination we're going to test that the seeds are working and we're also going to go off to the api and grab that one author and so we know what the author is going to be i want i want author number one or two so like one gives me one book and two gives me two books I'll get um I'll get author author one so that author ID we'll just make that be one Okay, so I want to, I'm gonna go to authors. And we're gonna go to authors slash author ID. Uh, how heavy or big is, is she? Uh, so he is a, he's not a Maine Coon. Um, he is supposed to be around 10 pounds. He's a little bit heavier than that. When, when I went and did my vacation earlier, like what, a month or so ago, uh, we had some people come in to take a look at him and I am fairly certain that they gave him lots of treats because when we came back, he was closer to 11 pounds than 10 pounds. Um, so we've been, I've been slowly working on that to like help bring him back down. So I think he's around 10.6 now, 10.7. Um, he yells at me a lot for food all the time. Um, but that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with like, if he, if he doesn't eat it right away, I'll put it back in the fridge and then he doesn't, then he's okay. But yeah, so he's a... He's a American medium hair, American domestic medium hair cat, I believe. Uh, something like that. Domestic medium hair. Uh, can you send a link for a screenshot of your setup? Um, because the stream's going to end up pretty soon, uh, the best place to put that would be in Discord. Uh, so if you join Discord there with that link, then uh, you then feel free to send a, dis, uh, a screenshot of your setup to um, the general channel, and we'll we'll give feedback on on it. Uh, otherwise, it will probably I probably won't be able to give you a, a good feedback right now. Um. But yeah, main. Uh, so I've never had a Maine Coon, Banaka. I've um, I've seen. Oh, what? It, who is it? It's um. Uh, Rachel and June's channel on YouTube. Uh, they have they have Maine Coon, and um, that's a those are big cats. And that yeah, I I can imagine like I've I've, on TV they they look huge. But they also are supposed to be like the dogs of the cat world. So like uh, you could just sort of treat them like dogs and they love water and other things like that could be that could be fun. Ooh, I can do a get on this. So I don't have to do a client. We can just go straight to request. Get. Uh, we want to get to the URL. Ooh. 
me the response. Okay, so that gives me the response. Let Is it okay or is it success? Absolutely. Um, thank you if you uh, if you join, Joey, and um, we'll. Uh, uh, I, I generally like after stream. I I have to go up and like join and actually do my day job and hang out with them. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably be able to respond a little bit later today once I get all my hellos out of the way. We're sort of like there's there's several of us who are on the Discord and we we chat back and forth, but it's it's not like it's a super super super. Uh, busy place. Okay, so status. Oh, it's not success. Um, I don't want in is success. I want it to be a 200. Is it okay? Oh, it's okay. That's what it is. All right, so if I run this as a test, you failed, oh, because we got a 404 and we wanted to get a 200. So I think this is a good place for me to leave off then uh, because I have a failing test. Uh, we'll be able to see exactly what that is and we'll know exactly what to do to, uh, to fix it, so. Uh, so we are starting testing that we can get one author with their books. All right, and that's all up there. So we're, we're good to go. And so with that, uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. Wednesday is a shorter stream day for me. Uh, the plan is that I'll start at around 6 a.m. Mountain Time and stream for about 45 minutes or so until around the 6.45, closer to 7. Uh, and then that that's just because uh, Wednesdays are my days that I go into the office. And starting this early allows me to stream. It just is really, really short because it takes me a while to get in there. Um, uh, but then Thursday and Friday will be long stream days again. So we get, we get four, four decent streams out of the week. And then we'll be working on this, uh, uh, the code for this route and continue working on the assessment until it's done, which should hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have everything good to go. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out today. Uh, and, uh, I hope that you all have a great rest of your day and uh, see you next time. Bye.